What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be looking at the Amazon Echo Show 10 third generation, which is Amazon's latest product when it comes to the uh, smart home system with a screen. You can watch like Netflix and Hulu and stuff on it. So today we're going to be going through doing like a setup and configuration video, showing you guys where all of the different types of settings are, as well as providing a quick review of what I felt like the product is worth, some of the things that I liked, some of the things that I didn't like, and also some of the caveats that you guys may want to watch out for. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in and get this thing set up. Perfect, so to get started, just a few things that I wanted to cover that is new on this thing. We've got a tilt functionality, which is really nice to have, and of course we've got a swivel base with a motion tracker uh, using the camera that's up there in the top right hand corner. Now a few drawbacks to this are if you close this privacy shield, any of the tracking ability uh, is, dis is currently disabled since it can no longer use the camera in order to do that. Another thing is that I've seen is Regardless of the color that you order, whether it's the black or the white, you get the white power cord, which I think is kind of a um, a lack of quality assurance, I guess, or an experience, because if I order a nice, like, sleek, black-looking Alexa system, I want uh, to hide the cord as much as I can. So, anyway, so it, co it comes with a white power cord regardless of which one that you order, so it may be kind of a deal breaker to you, but in any case, what you're going to want to do is, of course, plug everything in, and you can see that there's like a little paper template down here that they've provided that you basically want, want to put around as you're doing the tracking motion. This is the amount of space that you're going to need in order to uh, have, in order for things not to obstruct its its motion. So, once we've got it plugged in, you're of course just going to go through the setup. So we're going to select English. You're going to want to select your language. It's gonna search for some networks. We're going to go ahead and do the Girls Gone Wireless. Since that's my network, you'll want to obviously select yours and then punch in your password. So you're gonna to wanna to have your Wi-Fi password handy. Uh, I'm gonna uncheck this box that says save password to Amazon. I don't care for them to have that info. So I'm just gonna hit connect on that. If yours fail, you may wanna double check your password. Double check your Wi-Fi name, make sure it's the right one. Fetching registration. And of course, you're gonna to want to log in with your Amazon account. So you'll wanna make sure that you have that info handy as well. Uh, if you ordered it through your Amazon account, which most likely you did, it may already be set up. So some of these steps you may not have, it may be already pre-set up. While that's doing that or while we're going through this, another few things that have been added is the uh, 13 megapixel camera. So that is a 13 megapixel camera up there. And also because we now have the swivel or the larger base, uh, they've actually added a like a three inch subwoofer in there, which is gonna give you a much better sound quality because now you have two firing, uh, forward firing, uh, I believe they're one inch or two inch tweeters, and then you've got the subwoofer, which will give you a nice uh, balance of sound, so it's pretty cool. Um, also, you do have the camera security mode, which allows you to pivot this thing around and move this thing around as a security camera. So if you're out and away and you have this privacy shield open and enabled, which we'll go through that here in a minute, then you can put, uh, pivot this around as kind of a security device, which is pretty cool. So, all right, so it's got our info. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue. Confirm your time zone, that looks great. Mountain tight, daylight, that looks good. You're gonna want to change yours if yours is any different. Uh, you're gonna want to add your address if you don't have one in here or select it if it's already selected for you. If not, you can go down to the bottom and click enter your uh, enter a different address. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue. Those are good for things like weather updates or traffic updates, stuff like that. Uh, to which room is your Echo Show 10 going to be in? This is actually gonna be in the living room. Uh, if you need to do a custom one, I believe you can go down to the bottom right there. There's common groups, and you can go all the way down to the bottom and choose custom. Like I said, we're just going to do living room. Uh, give this name a playlist. Yep, we'll just say Echo Show is great. That's fine. Continue. Choose your wallpaper. We'll periodically change images within the category you select. If you're familiar with Amazon stuff, you can upload photos to your Amazon photos, and you can select that in here to be... Uh, a digital basically camera frame, frame which is pretty cool so we're just going to choose we'll do nature for now um you've got other ones like travel and art we'll hit continue echo show can help you monitor your home this is the uh, security camera feature so if you want to enable that you're going to want to tap on enable if you don't want that at all you're going to want to click on not now but we're going to go ahead and click on enable the Echo Show will now appear as a camera in your Alexa app. Go to the devices, cameras in the app to try out a live view to customize camera features. Go to settings on this device. We're going to tap on done. 
Now you can see it's gonna get ready for the motion and that's where this template is gonna come into play. It looks like I might have it just positioned just off just a little bit. Uh, but we're gonna say, where's your Echo Show place? This will help you set the best range of motion. Um, currently this one is basically, we're just gonna choose the on an island because it's kind of in the middle of everything. Depending on where yours is positioned, you're gonna want to select your option. So we're gonna tap on on an island. Preview how far your device will rotate. So we're gonna tap on preview. And this is going to go through its motion to show you how far it can rotate and make sure that it's not going to hit anything, which again is what this template is for. Uh, one of the drawbacks to this thing is it's not a full 360 range. If it gets to a certain point, it has to swing back the other direction instead of just being a continuous motion, which I think is kind of, kind of gimmicky. Um, with the tech that we have and the, the electronics that we have, it should definitely be a range of motion, or like an unlimited range of motion. It should be able to go in a full 360 regardless. So, all right, so preview in motion, we're done there. You can see this shows how far. You can actually take these sliders and you can move them left or right. Maybe not, let me see here, there we go. And you can see underneath there, you've got like a little pie graph that shows you where your rotation angle is going to be. And so we're just gonna leave it the full, so we'll do that. Uh, if you do make adjustments, you will have to tap on the preview again, just to verify that it's not gonna hit anything. And we'll tap save on this time. Now use a slider to set the idle position. We're just gonna click next, but you can slide that left or right, depending on where you want your idle position to be. And now we're all set, we'll hit continue. Coming soon, welcome to Sidewalk. Uh, Sidewalk, I'm not 100% up to speed on it, but it looks like it creates a small like hotspot for other devices to get more of like a seamless like mesh Wi-Fi system for the devices. For now, I'm just gonna click on disable. Uh, if you don't have, you can do a free Prime trial. We're gonna tap no thanks. Um, again, no thanks for the uh, Amazon Music. And we're just about done here. Then we can go through all the different types of settings. So another thing with this is, even if it you do have the motion set up, there is a clutch in there that if you start moving it and it detects resistance, it will allow you to free move it without harming it. Yep, so you can see now that it, since it sees me, it's moving as I tilt my head. Alexa, stop tracking. Okay, so I'm gonna move this back here. So you can see that I used a voice command to tell her to stop tracking. You can use the voice command to also have her start tracking. Um, so she wants me to announce that dinner is ready. We're not going to worry about any of those and she's just going to kind of go through and help us navigate which we're going to go through by ourselves here. So if you swipe up from the top or swipe down from the top, you've got your home. So you can go right to your home, which will take you to your main screen where your images are, your time, your date, your weather. Uh, you've also got your brightness as well as a digital uh, motion stop. So if you tap on this, it'll it'll turn the motion tracking off, but still leaves your privacy shield on in case you still want to use it as a security camera. Uh, do not disturb is, of course, it's going to mute anything except for alarms and notifications during the do not disturb period, which we'll go through the settings and set that up. Actually, we're going to tap on settings here in just a moment. But if we swipe over from the right and swipe left, you've got your discover stuff where it says set a reminder, make an announcement. You've got all of those settings in here as well as your communicate. You've got your music if you signed up for the music. Routines, if you have certain routines to turn lights on and off depending on uh, different phrases, you can access those routines right in here. And if you wanna know any more about different routines, I will post a link up in the top right hand corner to a video that we did on how to create those routines. Uh, smart home, this is if you've got smart home products such as like light switches, uh, uh, lights, switches in general, you can see that I've got a ton of different smart home devices that I can activate right from here as well as the groups and devices. So pretty cool and pretty in depth in there. If we scroll back over, you've got your video. So if you wanna watch like Hulu or Netflix or anything like that, you can access that stuff in here. And then of course you can access your alarms. Now again, all of this stuff is accessible via voice command as well. You just use the wake word and say so-and-so, I want you to open up Lucifer from Netflix on season whatever, and it will fire that up as long as you're signed in and open up that episode as well as if you wanna say, hey, you know, so-and-so turn off uh, office lights, it'll turn those off as well. So you have the voice control, but you also have the control panel or the command center 
on here as well. So if we swipe again down from the bottom or down from the top, we're gonna go into settings. We're just gonna run through these pretty quickly because there's a lot of these that are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Bluetooth, if you have any Bluetooth speakers or any other Bluetooth devices that you want to connect to your device, you can do that. Maybe the sound quality on this thing isn't what you're looking for. Maybe you have a really nice sound system that's Bluetooth that you'll plug in or that you can connect to it and play the music off of there. Uh, network, if you need to change your Wi-Fi or your network, you can tap into there and search for a different Wi-Fi network and connect to it via that. Display and brightness. Uh, again, you've got your brightness level, you've got adaptive brightness, where depending on the ambient light, it's going to either turn up or turn down the brightness. Sunrise effect, uh, again, it's uh, before alarm set, before five, 4 and 9 a.m., it's gonna alter the change, it's gonna alter the color of the screen in order to adjust and give you the most uh, look, the, the best looking screen in that type of environment. Same with the adaptive color down there. Going back, we're gonna go down to motion. This is where you can go in and edit your motion settings. Again, device mapping and idle position, motion preferences, when, when you want them to, uh, when you want it to move with you. You can do it during all activities. You can during select activities, during like calling and multimedia, watching videos and displaying, but that's about it. Or in unless on request. So it won't move unless you say, hey, so-and-so follow me, then it will start tracking you, which is pretty cool. Going back a few screens here. Uh, clock and uh, photo display, that's just pretty self-explanatory. You've got your, where you can change what you want to be displayed on the background here, as well as night mode and auto sleep, 24 hour clock. You've got some advanced options in here, which uh, looks like those are the advanced options. So the night mode and stuff, which is neat. Home content, this is what you're gonna want to see on the home as it's scrolling through things, aside from your wallpaper, active devices, calendar events, discovery, drop-ins, you can have all of these, uh, final scores, helpful hints during COVID-19, no thanks. News, don't really care about having news on there, notifications, sure, um, we'll turn those off. Popular recipes, popular. So again, you can go through and just configure all of these the way that you want to have certain things showing up on your home screen to give you the best home content that you want. Sounds, uh, this is just your volume level, your equalizer, you've got ascending alarm, it will gradually increase to your selected level. You can set up custom sounds, notifications, and then of course, if you're using the wake word, it'll make a tone upon start of request and then of end of request, you can turn those on and off. Free time, that's of course, if you have parental controls and free time set up with like kid profiles, you can kind of lock this thing down a little bit to only be able to work at certain times. Do not disturb, this is the, of course, it just mutes everything, like I said, except for timers and alarms. And then of course, you can schedule it to reoccur daily and then you can have your start and end time as well. Camera, home monitoring, this is where you'll turn on and off if you want the camera mode or show up as a camera, as a security camera. You can come in here to turn this on and off as well as add a delay before clear video streaming begins. And then you can also turn on play and alert when your camera begins streaming, which is nice to have. And those are settings that are in there. Communications, incoming call ringer. So if somebody's calling you, it's gonna make a tone. Device options, this is where you're gonna change the name. You can uh, set your device location, language, set your wake word, date, time, temperature, distance, uh, enable or disable Amazon Sidewalk, as well as reset it to factory defaults. Maybe you got one, you decided you're not, you're, you don't really care for it, you're not gonna use it, you're gonna want to reset to factory defaults if you end up sending it back or you end up selling the unit to a different person. Uh, restrict access, this is Amazon Photos, movie trailers, web browser, video, web search. This allows you to just go in and block or restrict different things depending on the people in the household. Alexa preferences, you've got your calendar and your email and photos. You can have different calendars and things for each person in the home. You've got those selected right there. And then of course, same thing with photos. You can use a slideshow. Accessibility. Voice view screen reader, which is nice. Screen magnifier, color inversion, color correction. So if you uh, need some of these accessibility options turned on to make things a little bit easier, you have those settings in there as well. So that's really just a quick rundown of all the different types of settings on this thing. Like I said, some of the uh, caveats are you need to have a full range of motion. If you turn this uh, the, the privacy shield on, it's obviously gonna disable the security camera ability. It's gonna disable the motion tracking. Um, and of course, it's gonna disable any video calling since it's gonna be put into a privacy mode. And then of course, you do get the white cable, which is kind of bad and 
It does have Wi-Fi 6, but it is currently not supported. I don't know if that's because they just haven't had the software put the, in this thing or a firmware upgrade to allow the Wi-Fi 6. But what, from what I understand is it does have a Wi-Fi 6 chip in there. Other than that, it's been a great device. Like I said, super responsive UI, especially coming from the second gen with the addition of the swivel feature, which is really cool. If you're maybe like, maybe doing some cooking or something like that, you can have it track you. And that way you can continue watching your show as it moves across, or maybe you're in a video call, it can track you and just allows a little bit more flexibility on it. So there you go, everything should be up and running by now. And overall, I've really enjoyed the experience of the third generation uh, Echo Show. However, I still don't think it is for everybody. At a cost of about 250 bucks, that's a steep upgrade if you're already on the second gen platform like I was unless you're looking for those screen movement and the tilting and the and the, the, the scrolling and also uh, the sound quality. They've added the subwoofer in there which makes the sound quality a quite a bit better than the second gen. So if those two things are certainly up your alley, then you might be able to justify the extra 250 bucks to upgrade to the third gen. However, if you're somebody that is just getting started in the smart home platform, this is a solid place to start. You're offered a powerful processor, a great size screen, you've got the movement, you've got the tilt functionality. It's just a great place to start and I would highly recommend it. Other than that, I would definitely stay on the second gen if you're not gonna be using any of those features because the second gen Echo Show is still an awesome product. Anyways, guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you liked it and you got something out of it. If you did, be sure to like, share, and of course, subscribe. And also, if you want to support us in other ways, head on over to shop.helpcloud.com. We've got a lot of cool merch lineup that you guys can check out over there. I will post the product links for the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 down in the video description. And of course, if you guys have any other comments or questions, post those below as well. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. Thanks for your time and the support, and we will see you on the next one. Peace. <gasps>